Welcome to lecture number 16 for EE206 Circuits 1, Comparators and Schmidt Triggers. Now in all the previous lectures, we've been looking at op-amp circuits, and when you have an op-amp circuit with negative feedback, the first equation to write is V plus equals V minus. That's not always the case. This is going to look at three cases wherein V plus is not equal to V minus. The first one is when I have a, an amplifier, like an instrumentation amplifier with negative feedback, if I try to have an output which is more than my power supply, I clip at the power supply. That's one case. Uh, second case is a comparator. If there is no feedback, then either A is greater than B or A is less than B. In that case, Y either slams high to the plus power supply or Y slams low to the minus power supply. Uh, third case will be a Schmidt trigger. A uh, Schmidt trigger is very, very similar to a instrumentation amplifier, except that with a Schmidt trigger, I have positive feedback. Positive feedback is unstable, and what that does is it forces the output to slam high to 5 volts or a slam low to 0 volts. Now, in these cases, the power supply does matter. Likewise, when you simulate these in Circuit Lab, you'll need to use the op amp where you specify the power supply so I know where the output slams. When I am not cl uh, clipping, when I'm not using comparators and I am using negative feedback, then you don't really need the power supply. That just assumes the power supply is whatever it needs to be where it's big enough so that I am capable of driving that output. So let's look at those three circuits. The first one is clipping. Clipping is when you have an amplifier, like in this case, this is a non-inverting amplifier that we've been looking at. Only in this case, I'm going to limit the output to be plus six volts and minus six volts. That's the power going to the plus minus input to the op amp. Now, if I were to simulate this with a one volt sine wave, this has a gain of 7. I'm going to try to go to plus minus 7 volts, but I can't. I can't go beyond the power supply. So in that case, I clip at plus 6 volts and minus 6 volts. This is shown up in the input-output characteristics. This is an amplifier with a gain of 7 that saturates at 6 volts, or clips. If I simulate that in Circuit Lab, what I'll get is this. Here you have a input as a sine wave, one volt sine wave. Output's also a sine wave. It tries to be seven times the input, but clips at six volts. When it's not clipping, then V plus equals V minus. When you do clip, then there's just not enough voltage out to force V plus equal to V minus. At this time, V plus is no longer V minus. So that equation doesn't hold anymore. If you want to fix this, what you need to do is use a bigger power supply, one that goes beyond seven volts, or use a smaller input. A uh, second circuit is a comparator. A comparator outputs a binary signal. It's either 5 volts or 0 volts, on or off. Where you'd use a comparator is if you want to do something like drive a motor, drive a light. So the motor is either full on or full off, or the light is full on, full off. That'd be like a night, a night light or a fan. The circuit for comparator is actually very simple. It's just an op amp with no feedback. For an op amp, the output is a large gain, typically like 200,000 times V plus minus V minus. If V plus is, v plus is slightly more than V minus, I'll slam high to the plus power supply. If V plus is slightly less than V minus, I slam low to ground. If I simulate that circuit in Circuit Lab and have X be the blue line, Y is the orange line, Notice that the output is binary. It's either 0 volts or 5 volts. And it switches right here at full volts. When the input passes through 4 volts, ideally, the output slams low or slams high. That's a comparator. With that, I can build a temperature sensor. Like, suppose I want to have a fan that turns on at 20 degrees Celsius. I want to have a circuit that outputs 5 volts when the temperature is above 20C and 0 volts when it's below 20C. To do that, I first take a temperature sensor. For example, here's a thermistor where the resistance changes the temperature. Find the resistance at 20 Celsius. In this case, it's 1250 ohms. Then convert the resistance to voltage. A voltage divider will convert the 1250 ohms to 2.77 volts. So what that means is I want to switch at 2.77 volts. There's my comparator. For the plus minus inputs, for this resistor, as temperature goes up, R goes down. As temperature goes up, X goes down. And at really high temperatures, when X is small, I want Y to be large. 
So in that case, you connect with minus input, that gives you that inversion. So this circuit will output the binary signal uh, is temperature greater than 20 C. Now a problem with the comparator is that at 20 C, the output will chatter. That can cause problems. If you have a motor constantly being cycled on and off, the motor will burn out. If I have a light constantly being turned on and off, the light will flicker. To prevent that at hysteresis, so in that case, I'm going to have an on voltage and an off voltage. Say you want to turn on at 4 volts, turn off at 3 volts. If the input voltage is increasing, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. Once you go to 4 volts, I jump high. Then the output stays high until I get down to 3 volts, then it jumps low. That's what a Schmidt trigger does. This is like an instrumentation amplifier, except that instead of having negative feedback, I now have positive feedback. What positive feedback does is if you're too, going too fast, go faster. If it's too hot, get hotter. If the voltage is too high, go higher. That forces this to be unstable. So this line right here, when the output is R1 over R2, V plus equals V minus, that's not stable. If I have a little bit of noise and it goes slightly above this line, I slam high. If I go a little bit below the line with noise, I slam low. So there's the circuit for Schmidt trigger and its characteristics. And there's two different designs. If I want to have a design where the output is high when x is high, I use this circuit. x goes on the plus input. The slope is the gain, the slope of this line. So the output changes by 5 volts as the input changes by this difference. Say if it's going from 4 to 3, I'd have a 5 to 1 ratio. And this point right here, where you turn on, where you, when the output is 0, where you switch, is the offset right here. The opposite is if I switch the plus minus input, have x go on the minus side, I now get the opposite pattern. When x is large, the output is low. When x is low, the output is high. In this case, again, the gain is the slope. Output changes by 5 volts as the input changes by the difference in the two. That's R1 over R2. The offset, again, is when the output is 0, where do you switch? And the reason for that is when the output is 0 and I switch, the important thing about switching is that that point, V plus equals V minus. If the output is 0, this point is 0, that is 0, V plus equals V minus. So by symmetry, the inputs are the same. X is equal to V off, V on, and this will also be V on. I got that backwards, so that should be V on. Uh, for example, suppose I want to design a circuit which outputs 5 volts for temperatures more than 20 C, 0 volts for temperatures below 15 C. In that case, I'd use the Schmidt trigger. First find the resistance at 20 C and 15 C, then convert that to a voltage divider, like so. Um, the voltages I want to switch at, I want to turn on at 2.77 volts, turn off at 3.05 volts, using this relationship. The point where I switch is the offset. I want to have negative go to the negative input. When x is large, the output is low. When x is low, the output is large. That negative relationship means go to the minus input. And the slope is the gain. Output changes by 5 volts. As the input changes by 0.7 volts, I have a gain of 7 to 1. So make the resistor ratio 7 to 1. So this circuit gives you that VI characteristic. That's the Schmidt trigger that will turn on at 20C and off at 15C. In Circuit Lab, I can verify that design, build the circuit, and I can either sweep temperature and put in a temperature sensor, or I can sweep the resistance and see that it switches at 1250 ohms and 1576 ohms, or I can sweep voltage and see that it switches at 2.77 volts and 3.47 volts. Here I'm going to use the voltage source and check the voltages. For the sine wave, I have a sine wave that's centered at 3 volts. That's your DC offset. It goes plus minus 1. When it goes below this point, 2.76 volts, the output turns on. When it goes above this point, 3.5 volts, it turns off. And the difference in the two is your dead band. That's the hysteresis region. That's where you prevent chatter. So that's three circuits where you do not have V plus equal to V minus. The, when you have clipping, comparator and a Schmidt trigger. Otherwise, you almost always do have V plus equal to V minus. That's when you have an amplifier. If you want the output to be a gain times the input, there I'm using an amplifier. 
And in that case, we'll have v plus equal to v minus. That's lecture number 16 for ECE 206, circuits 1.